Our oceans have always been the great unknown. They cover over 70% of the planet, yet we've explored only a fraction. But not too long ago, sea levels were dramatically different, and vast areas that were once land have been lost beneath the waves. So is it possible we're missing something? Could ancient cultures have thrived here, in areas that are now submerged? Because if humans, like we've always done, built by the water, then rising seas didn't just change our coasts, they might have erased entire chapters of our story. Hi guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Michael. I have a degree in ancient history and on this channel, we discuss the unexplainable mysteries of our past. Let's get into it. Throughout history, humans have always lived by the coasts. We have built our homes, cities and civilizations next to water, and this makes perfect sense. The sea provides access to food, trade, transport and fertile land. Rivers, lakes and especially coastlines offered everything early societies needed. But this isn't just ancient history, it still applies today. Over 40% of the global population currently lives within 100 kilometers of a coast. Some of our most famous and largest cities are built by the sea. So it's no stretch to imagine that ancient people did the same. Coastlines have always been the prime real estate, the smartest, most logical and most likely place for humans to live, thrive and build. But what I'm not sure many people appreciate is just how drastically our coastlines have changed and how this change has happened relatively recently. Around 15,000 years ago, as Earth began to come out of the last ice age, much of the planet's water was locked in enormous glaciers. This meant sea levels were over 120 meters lower than they are today. Vast areas of land that are now submerged beneath the ocean were instead rich, fertile, abundant and habitable, the perfect place for human settlement. But then, the world began to thaw, and what followed was one of the most dramatic transformations in Earth's recent history. Around 14,000 years ago, an event called Meltwater Pulse 1A triggered a sudden surge in sea level. We're talking 20 meters of rise in just a few centuries, an immense, global-scale flooding event. Coastlines shifted inland by hundreds of kilometers within just a few generations. Entire ecosystems, hunting grounds, and almost certainly settlements were swallowed by the encroaching sea. But this wasn't a one-off. Another pulse came around 11,500 years ago, called Meltwater Pulse 1B. Again, sea levels surged. Again, the coast transformed. And this trend continued consistently until only around 6,000 years ago. Now we know that vast tracts of land were lost during this time. In total, roughly 20 million square kilometers of coastal land were submerged, nearly the size of all North America. But this isn't theoretical, we found the evidence drowned river valleys, submerged forests, ancient shorelines and even traces of stone tools beneath the waves. The most logical and likely places humans settled during the last ice age are now completely underwater. So bearing this in mind, is it possible we're missing something? Is it possible an entire culture or perhaps multiple cultures flourished before this sea level rise, but now sit hidden at the bottom of the ocean? A lot of people will say, okay, sure, sea levels rose, but 12,000 years ago, come on, that's way before civilization, that's before agriculture, before cities, before anything advanced. But that view is based on outdated assumptions. We've only recently discovered that modern humans have been around for over 300,000 years, so it turns out 12,000 years ago is actually extremely recent in our story. And we know that the foundations for civilization were already in place long before this date. For instance, the beginnings of agriculture have been traced back far earlier than the conventional timeline suggests. At the Ohalo II site in Israel, dated to around 23,000 years ago, we find evidence of plant cultivation, grinding tools, and even permanent structures. In China, similar grinding stones suggest wild cereal cultivation and processing at roughly the same date. These sites, while not on a large scale, prove that the knowledge and behavior required for farming clearly existed long before the Neolithic Revolution. And the same can be said for the capability to build megalithic architecture. Sites like Gebekli Tepe and Karahan Tepe in Turkey, dated to around 12,000 years ago, feature monumental stonework, symbolic carvings, and massive megalithic construction that would have required planning, labor organization, and symbolic thinking. And yet these were built by societies that were supposedly pre-civilized. In fact, the ability to build complex structures may be much, much older than even that. At Kalambo Falls in Zambia, a site dated to nearly 500,000 years ago, we found interlocking wooden structures, purpose-built platforms, and early signs of settlement behavior. 
This wasn't random, it was intelligent design from humans who clearly understood construction and permanence. So by 12,000 years ago, the toolkit for civilization already existed and had done for a long, long time. Farming knowledge, present. Megalithic architecture, proven. Construction ability, far older than we thought. And social organization is implied by all of the above. So why couldn't sophisticated cultures have existed back then? Humans clearly already had the capabilities. So if civilization, or something like it, could have existed 12,000 years ago, and if the most likely place to build said cultures would have been along the coast, then what if we're missing something? What if this dramatic sea level rise has covered up something big? Because if there was an older culture that existed before the oceans expanded, it would be very hard for us to find it today. Underwater archaeology is notoriously difficult and expensive, and frankly, there's just too much submerged land to even know where to begin. But there is one place we can look for clues, for a hint at a lost world. And that isn't under the sea, but somewhere else. It's within the human memory. Because what's truly fascinating is that almost every ancient culture on Earth did remember something like this. They all recount a giant flood and preserve its devastation through myth. We find flood myths literally everywhere. In Mesopotamia, the Epic of Gilgamesh tells of a giant flood that wiped out humanity, and one man, Utnapishtim, who builds a great boat to survive. In the Hebrew Bible, it's the flood of Noah and his famous ark. In India, the god Vishnu warns a man named Manu to build an ark for the flood. In Greece, Deucalion and Pyrrha survive a flood meant to erase mankind. In the Americas, the Maya, Inca and many native North American tribes all have stories of great floods. And China, Australia, Polynesia and Africa preserve similar flood tales. But these aren't just a few scattered legends. In fact, scholars have identified over 200 distinct flood myths from all around the world. Different gods, different names, different places but the same core story repeats again and again. A world destroyed by water, a handful of survivors. So could they all just be making this up? Is it just a common story we like to tell ourselves? Or were they remembering something real? Now remember when I mentioned just how drastically sea levels rose at the end of the last ice age? Remember one of the most extreme episodes known as Meltwater Pulse 1B? Well, here's where things get really interesting. One of the most famous flood myths of all is the story of Atlantis. Greek philosopher Plato, writing in the 4th century BC, documented the existence of Atlantis, claiming it was a powerful, advanced civilization that vanished beneath the ocean in a single day and night of misfortune. But what's fascinating is that he gave a precise date for the flooding of the city, 12,000 years ago, which puts the catastrophe eerily close to the time of Meltwater Pulse 1b. That is a stunning coincidence. Plato's Atlantis story has always been thought to be just that, a story, philosophical allegory. But the discovery of this real global flooding event, backed up by solid data, aligning precisely with Plato's date is remarkable. It's incredible when modern science and ancient myth line up like this. So is it just a coincidence? Maybe. But perhaps not. What if Plato was echoing a much older memory, passed down from survivors of a real cataclysm? A memory of rising seas, sinking coasts, and the end of a forgotten world. In my view, this is a possibility worth considering, because myths, as we're learning, aren't just silly stories. They often begin with something real, and maybe all those flood myths scattered across the globe aren't fiction. They could be fragments of truth. But myth and memory alone aren't enough. Stories can be distorted. Legends can drift over time. So the real question is, is there any physical evidence? Well, we're starting to find it. All around the world, something strange is emerging from beneath the waves. Not just empty seabeds, but signs of habitation. Take the Sunda Shelf, once a vast, fertile land connecting parts of Southeast Asia. It's now submerged, but recent discoveries suggest ancient humans may have lived and thrived there. Stone tools, choppers, flakes, scrapers, dating back tens of thousands of years. Submerged river channels, fertile forests, landscapes early humans would have chosen to live on. Or there's Doggerland, a vast landmass that once connected Britain to the continent. 11,000 years ago, it was a rich, populated world. Now it lies beneath the North Sea. But fishermen still dredge up tools, bones and traces of ancient life. Or off Cuba, where sonar scans have revealed bizarre formations 600 meters underwater. Shapes that resemble roads, pyramids and urban layouts, far too deep to have been built in modern times. If they're real, they'd predate the end of the last ice age and therefore everything we know about human civilization. 
Then there's Yonaguni, near Japan. Divers discovered immense stone terraces, steps and platforms rising from the seabed. Some call it natural erosion. Others, including prominent Japanese researchers, insist it's man-made. Again, it may well be natural, but the geometry does look remarkably precise. Or Bimini Road, a fascinating submerged structure off the coast of the Bahamas that eerily resembles a man-made road. Even in Spain, a prehistoric Stonehenge was recently discovered when water levels lowered, a stone circle thought lost for thousands of years, now standing once again in the light. Together these sites whisper the same possibility, that we may have lost an entire chapter beneath the waves. So let's recap. We've got a worldwide flood in oral memory. We've got a sudden, catastrophic sea level rise that aligns with myth. We've got submerged landmasses and ruins in precisely the place humans would have settled. So we have to ask, what if civilization or something like it existed earlier than we thought? And the evidence is simply hiding beneath the sea. Because here is the thing. If ancient humans did build along these now submerged coastlines, then those sites would have been sitting under salt water for thousands of years. And salt water is brutal. It corrodes, it wears down, organic material vanishes, stone structures crumble, entire settlements can be eroded until they're nearly unrecognizable. So even if there was something down there, finding clear intact evidence is incredibly difficult. So it's not that the past didn't exist, it's that the ocean has done a terrifyingly good job of hiding it. So bearing all this in mind, isn't it quite likely that humans did inhabit and build on coastlines during the last ice age? And the reason we don't see it is because of time and erosion, and maybe because we've only just begun looking beneath the waves. We haven't mapped the ocean floor the way we've mapped the land, not even close. Underwater archaeology is still in its infancy. Until recently, we didn't have the technology to scan deep sea floors with any kind of precision. Most of our seabed remains unmapped, unexplored and completely untouched by archaeologists. And so if those early cultures were really coastal, as logic suggests, then their ruins wouldn't be sitting in deserts or plains. They'd be buried under hundreds of feet of water, beneath layers of sediment, coral and thyme. In other words, we haven't found it because we couldn't. But that's starting to change. New tools like LiDAR, sub-bottom sonar, and autonomous underwater drones are opening up a new world we've never properly examined before. And every year we're finding more, in places we never thought to look. The ocean is the next archaeological frontier, and if the past is hiding somewhere out there deep beneath the waves, we might finally be on the verge of finding it. Obviously, none of this is proof of a lost civilization beneath the ocean. But what I'm trying to convey is that the possibility is a very real one. And it's a possibility that deserves to be explored, investigated and taken seriously rather than dismissed. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I just launched a brand new Patreon, so check that out to support my work and get loads of bonus content. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and let me know what you think in the comments below.